Hey guys, today we're going to learn about combining like terms. Now let's start with something maybe a little bit simpler than combining algebra terms. Let's combine together some like fruits. So here I have a problem and I have four apples, three bananas, three more apples, and two bananas. And so I want to combine together my fruits so that I'm only listing each type of fruit one time. So I'm going to take my four apples and my three apples and I'm going to add them together and I have seven apples. Notice that I only added together the four and the three. I did not change the word apples. Then I'm going to take my three bananas and my two bananas and I'm going to put them all together in one pile and that makes a total of five bananas. Again, I only added the three and the two. The word bananas stayed the same. For combining like terms, we're going to do something very, very similar to that. Now, before we can combine like terms, let's make sure that we understand what we were allowed to combine together. So again, we didn't combine together the apples with the bananas. We only combined apples with apples. And so when you're combining like terms for algebra, you also want to find things that are exactly the same. Specifically, the variables have to be the same and the exponents on the variables also have to be the same. Don't forget, we learned last week that terms are separated by adding and subtracting signs. So don't try to like separate out two variables that are right next to each other. Those are all considered to be one term. And then finally, you can also combine together numbers that don't have variables. Those are called constants. And so it doesn't have to be the exact same variables. It could be that they both don't have variables and those would also be like terms. Okay, here's a list of a bunch of different numbers and uh, variables, terms, if you will. And so let's see which ones are similar, which ones we could potentially combine together. Okay, so starting with the 5x, if we look through our lineup here, we just need to find something else that only has a letter x. So this one has a letter x, but it's an x squared. Since it has a different exponent, I can't use that. My next term does have an x, it's a 12x. And so that's gonna be the like term with the 5x. The next number in my list is the 8y. So now we just gotta scan through and try to find something else that has a y. And looking at all these terms, nothing else has a y. Now it's okay if something doesn't have a like term, that just means you're not gonna add it together with something else, you're gonna keep it the same for the problem. Next in my list, I have a 9z, so I would need to find something with a z. That would be this 14z over here. Next, I have the number 10. Now again, 10 is called a constant since it doesn't have a variable with it, and it can be combined together with another constant. So another number that has no variables with it, like this number seven. And then finally, I have my x squared, and that can only combine together with another x squared. So that can be combined with this three x squared. Notice that you cannot combine x's with x squares. Okay, so that's how you can identify like terms. Now, this problem didn't have any adding or subtracting in it. I just kind of separated everything with commas. So let's do a problem that has actual adding and subtracting in it. All right, so let's combine like terms with an algebraic expression. Now, when you're combining like terms with an algebraic expression, you're going to, again, find two terms that have the same variables, but you're not going to change the variables. You're only going to add together the coefficients. So in this example where I have a 5x and a 9x, I'm going to think in my head 5 plus 9. Notice that I didn't use the letter x at all, and I thought, okay, that answer is 14. Once I get the number part of my answer, I'm just going to take the variable exactly how it was, and I'm going to tack it on at the end of the number. And so my final answer is 14x. Again, notice that the variable did not change. Only the numbers changed. Let's try just a couple more like this. Make sure that we fully understand this. Okay. Sometimes what I like to do in these problems is I like to identify my like terms and then like group them together somehow. So in this first problem, I see a 4x right here. And then further on in the problem, I see a negative 2x. Now notice that I included the negative symbol with the 2x. Um, and so the minus sign has to stay attached. And so when I see this, I think in my head, what is 4 minus 2? And then I put a letter x next to it. And so I have a 2x. 
Continuing with the problem, I see a positive 5y and I see a positive 3y. Notice that on the x's I underlined, but on the y's I circled. That way I can tell the difference between the two. So again, I'm going to think in my head, what is 5 plus 3? And that's a positive 8, so I'm going to write plus 8. And then I'm just going to carry down the letter y. The simplified version is 2x plus 8y. Let's try that next one. When you're writing your final answer to these problems, we do usually go in alphabetical order, and then any number that doesn't have a letter with it usually gets tacked on at the end. So given the option between a number, an x, and a y, I'm going to start with my letter x. So I have a positive 5x and a negative 8x. Talked about this last week. Positive 5 and negative 8 is going to end up with a negative 3. Let me stick that x at the end. Next, I have a negative 4y and a positive 2y. Negative 4, positive 2. That's also going to end up with a negative answer, negative 2, and then I put that y at the end. Now I also have this constant here, this number 3. I don't have any other constants in this problem, so I don't have anything to combine together with it. So it's just going to say a positive 3, and it gets tacked on at the end. Again, alphabetical order, and anything that does not have a letter is at the end. This is the end of our first video.